heart up on the line I said no more wasting my time Whoa, oh, oh, oh. I said I love you, you know that's true I trust you cause you know me best You are my peace, you are my rest Whoa, oh, oh, oh. And I have you, and you know that's true situations where I didn't know what to do. Being a Christian and believing in God, often we go to prayer and we trust Him for things, but we also know that there's a side to it where you have to do your own part and where you actually have to do something. But what? What should you do? Today I would like to share a story with you, actually a testimony. My husband and I got married in 2011. And we were married for about two years when we started trying for a baby. Unfortunately, while we were trying for a baby, we received the diagnosis that Francia had Crohn's disease as well as colon cancer. When we received that diagnosis, in my mind, we had three options. Number one was go the traditional route, go for chemotherapy and operation and all the treatments that go with that. Number two was do the natural thing and follow all of the natural remedies that are available nowadays. And number three was pray to God for a supernatural miracle healing. Now I was really seeking God's face and asking him what we were supposed to do. Because obviously I did not want to lose my husband. I did not want to see him go through all of that. And I really, really had a dream and trusted God that he would be healed and that we would have a long and happy life together. It seems very obvious to go the traditional route, but I really asked God to tell us in a clear, vivid way what we were supposed to do. Actually, I wish that there would come a voice from the heavens that would tell us to do this or do that. And I really hope that whatever answer we received, that it would be very, very clear. So I was praying about this and talking to people and talking to Francia and I really kept on asking God what are we supposed to do? Which one of these routes would end up with Francia being healthy and happy and live a long life? So fast forward a couple of weeks, one morning I had a lift with one of my colleagues and I was supposed to drive with her to work. So that morning while I was getting ready for work, I somehow misplaced my phone and I couldn't really find it but I was still very much on schedule and early so I didn't worry too much about it. So when it was time to start to get ready because she was about to arrive I wanted to open the door and I couldn't. The door was absolutely stuck. I couldn't open the front door. Luckily we have another door so I thought maybe I could just exit there and Lo and behold, the key did not want to work. Both our doors were absolutely, totally stuck. Lo and behold, a few minutes later, she pulled up in the driveway and I had no way of telling her that I was stuck in the house because I couldn't find my phone. So I opened up the sliding door and I shouted at her and I was screaming and saying, I'm stuck in the house, go on without me. And there was no way that I could get through to her. I could also hear that her CD player was on and that she was listening to music. So there was absolutely no hope of reaching her. So I was stuck in the house. I literally tried to break down the front door and I kicked and I did everything that I could but I absolutely could not open the door and I could not find my phone and I was stuck in the house. After about 20 minutes or so she gave up and drove to work. She probably thought that I forgot or whatever happened. So I was in the house and I was absolutely frustrated. This was in the middle of all of these things going on with Francia and his health issues and these big decisions that we had to make. And I literally, <laughs> I lost it. So I stood in front of the front door and I said, God, please give me my phone right now. And something just told me to walk to the bedroom I lifted up the duvet where I've looked for 
an hour and many 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 times and then my phone was so I took my phone and just calmly I took my keys and I walked to the front door and I said God please open this door right now right now and I put the key in the door and lo and behold it opened okay so crisis averted because I could still drive to work with my own car we had a lift club to save fuel and all of that so I got in my car and I drove to work and I thought this is really a blue Monday and you know you start to feel sorry for yourself because I have to deal with all of these things and now this also happened and I had to explain to her at work what happened and the story just seemed so unbelievable and crazy and hectic but anyway I was on my way to work driving calmly in the car and I switched on the radio my favorite radio station is Radio Tigerberg, which is a Christian radio station here in Cape Town or in South Africa and I put it on 104 FM and I listened to Radio Tigerberg. But then after a couple of minutes, somehow the radio station got stuck. So it was just stuck. It was a news bulletin. I remember very clearly it was a part of the news bulletin that was about a movie or something that they made and somebody played a certain role and the person was just saying the words over and over again. Um, it was just stuck. So I tried to sw switch it to a different radio station and literally as I looked at the radio the numbers would just jamble or scramble and it would go back to ra Radio Tiger Bird. Now I was at the peak of frustration at this moment so I just switched off the radio and it came on again and as the more I switched it off the more the radio just turned on by itself. I tried to put it on different stations again and it just went back to Radio Tigerberg and it was stuck on this one word. And eventually I just gave up and I tried to just ignore it, put the volume very softly because it could, would not switch off to having no sound. And I just drove to work, thought nothing of it, went on with my day, tried to put this blue Monday behind me and did everything that I had to. Two days later, friends of ours came over and we were just talking and chatting and I was telling them about this big decision that we had to make. Doctor, which is the traditional route, the natural route, or just pray for a supernatural miracle. And straight after that story, I told them, oh, you will never guess what happened to me on Monday. And as I was telling the story, I, I just call it my brick moment because to me it felt like a brick hit me straight between the eyes and it clicked everything just fell into place I was praying and asking God for a very clear answer as to what we were to do in terms of this diagnosis that we received and I remember the word that was being repeated over and over again in the car two days before that was the word doctor so I was driving in the car and the radio station was stuck and it was just saying doctor, 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 all over and over and over and over again. Uh, probably for about 35 minutes. And I thought about it, but I did not want to just say, oh, that was probably the answer because I, I, it clicked that that was the word and that was one of the three things that I was praying about. But later the evening and the, especially the next day, the Thursday, I was thinking about everything that happened and I thought about me being stuck in the house um, if I had gone with my colleague she never listens to the radio she also always listens to CDs in the car um, so I was stuck in the house and I was it, I had to drive with my own car to listen to the radio to that radio station for me to hear this particular word. Now later on I phoned into the radio station and I told them the story. I've absolutely to this day I have no idea what actually happened. If it was a technical glitch, if this only happened in my car. Uh, funny enough a few days later the exact same thing happened to Francia in terms of the radio. The radio station it was just stuck on Radio Tigerberg. We could not change the radio station. And this was, I think, the Tuesday and Wednesday, and as soon as I started putting things together, both of car radios were fixed. 
so we could change the radio stations again and everything went on as normal and I just thought you know what I asked God to answer me clearly and he did um, if I just think about that and I just think about how much I trusted him and how much I wanted an answer and how much I wanted to do what you wanted us to do it's absolutely amazing just the way he answered me I just I'm just amazed at how faithful God is and how creative and unexpected um, and how trustworthy so we really trusted him for the breakthrough and he came through we followed the traditional routes and Francia had the operation and the chemotherapy and he's been in remission for three years now and all of his tests they just come back better and better every time and in the last um, colonoscopy that he went for the doctor said Francia you I've never seen results as good as this you are absolutely healthy and normal and it's just amazing to me that God chose that route for him to be healed and I really believe that it's his grace and his mercy um, but I'm just so so very very thankful so because of all of the treatments and everything that was going on it was really difficult for us to start to try to have a family obviously because Francia was sick then he had to go for an operation, then he had to recover from the operation, go for the chemotherapy and in all of that it's very dangerous to try for a baby obviously. We had to wait at least nine months after the chemotherapy finished for us to start trying again. We went through IVF, we, went, we had two artificial inseminations, uh, we had quite a few other um, tests and things just to see whether the chemotherapy um, had an impact on his fertility and the results came back very very good there was one um, count that was a little low but nothing to be worried about and the doctors even said even normal people's you know count is it, it falls within the normal range still and we've made quite a few videos about our infertility or fertility journey so you're welcome to go watch that for all of the background but after all of that nothing worked and we've been trying for another year now uh, our last failed IVF or our last IVF that failed was in November 2016 and as you know now it is December 2017 so we tried for a full year and once again nothing has happened and I find myself at this crossroads once again what are we supposed to do we really want children this is our dream we want to build our family in spite of everything that we've gone through we would love to have children and be parents and you know just just to expand on our family and as you know we've discussed all of this before we've looked at all of the options we've looked at doing IVF again we've looked at adoption we've looked at donors we've looked at you know just not necessarily that we considered all of the options but we know that there are options available so once again <laughs> we're at this point and I'm really praying and asking God what am I supposed to do what are we supposed to do are we supposed to adopt are we supposed to give up and not have children are we supposed to just keep on trying naturally should we do a sperm test um, to see whether or what the count is now should we go for another artificial insemination IVF do ICSI a surrogate all of these things in spite of the fact that nothing is actually wrong but it's just not working so we've had this YouTube channel for more than a year now a year and a half actually and I wish I made a video like this before that whole thing with the radio station happened um, because I think for now you just have to take my word for it if you don't want to believe me there's actually no proof or anything that I could give you to tell you that 
everything that I'm telling you is the absolute truth but I decided to make this video before the fact and what I'm doing today is I'm sharing with you what I believe God has told us to do next and that is option three so once again do we go the traditional route do we get doctors and fertility specialists involved number two do we go the natural route and take all of the supplements and you know chart and do all of those things or number three do we trust God for a supernatural intervention breakthrough miracle like we didn't trust God before with everything we did we prayed about it we asked him for his hand in all of the treatments and everything that we did every decision we prayed and asked for guidance but to be completely honest with you it felt a little bit like radio silence <laughs> pardon the pun because we asked and we asked for a clear answer but to be honest I'm not really sure that we really got a clear answer as to what to do next. We used our common sense and we used the resources that we had to our disposal and we went for the treatments and it's never, it's not like we ever tried to do it ourselves and not um, trust God with it. It's nothing like that. But I've really come to a place where I'm done I can't do this anymore I can't go on and on and have a new plan and a new plan and a new meeting and a new discussion and a new plan of action and a new timeline and a new process and a new procedure I am done Originally, our plan was for Francia to, to go for a sperm analysis in December to see just is everything still fine after the chemotherapy and over the past year has anything changed, is there anything we need to know and based on that we would make our next decision as to what to do in the beginning of 2018. That was our original plan and you know what? We've chucked that. I believe with my entire heart that it's God's will that we have children. I believe that what He wants for us is a good, happy, healthy, long, full life. And I know that He is the source of all of that. So we decided that we are going to absolutely fly blind. We don't have information as to if there's anything wrong with any one of us more than we had a year ago. We have different options available, but our dream is for us to have our own biological children that are normal, healthy, happy, and for our family to grow. Now this is a big risk to take because we are making a YouTube video and putting it on the internet. So here are the things that you could probably wonder about and also thoughts that could cross our mind if we're not careful. Here we go. What if it doesn't work? What if we change our minds and want to go for fertility treatments in the future? What if people think that this is just a way for us to protect ourselves because we don't know what to do next and just to give it over to God is the easy way out? What if we are trying to protect ourselves and our feelings and we are, this is a cop out. What if something is really wrong biologically with one of us and we don't know and we keep on trying or doing nothing and we're wasting time and precious years and eggs and all of the resources that we have now while we are still young. What if God doesn't exist and he's really not there and this is all just a way for us to feel better and to put our hope in something else and just to know that it cannot be true that it's just simply that cruel that we are not blessed with a baby although we really want one. What if we are really really embarrassed by putting all of this on the internet and on YouTube and people watch this video and it never works 
and they think wow some god you are trusting him and he's not coming through for you what if there's still something wrong with Francia's sperm caused by the chemotherapy and that would lead to an abnormal pregnancy or baby. What if we get pregnant and it's a miscarriage? Some God. What if all of this is just a coincidence? What if it's not his voice and what we are experiencing is not him but it's just from ourselves? What if we never have children? What if we are just wasting our time? What if we are wasting precious time? The same God that is true to His word in every single story that we read in the Bible. The same God that has answered me before, I believe and I trust that He will answer me again. And I really feel that his will for us is that we would be pregnant, that we would have a family, that everything would go very, very well. And I believe that what he's trying to say is, give me a chance. Because I'm telling you, YouTube, the world, the internet, that if I get pregnant, it will be God alone. It could only be him because we are stopping now. We are not going to try anymore. We are going to give it to him, everything, all of it, give it to him and trust him with this. It's on the one hand, it's a very big relief because I know that there's nothing that we are going to um, plan out and obsess over that's going to cause us to fall pregnant. And on the other hand, it's quite scary because all of these questions can come to you at any given time and I am expecting a backlash. I know that maybe um, I will not feel like this every day. Maybe thoughts will come and things will happen. But I am just going to stand on God's word and I'm going to meditate on what His promises say. And I believe that we are going to have a miracle baby. Today is Monday, the 4th of December, 2017. And I want to declare that we are trusting God to give us a baby. What we are experiencing is that He wants a chance to do this, to do this for us on His own without our help, as if we can help Him or add to anything that He's already done, which is ridiculous. But... I am looking forward to sharing good news with you. I don't know when it will be and how it will happen, but I am standing on God's word and I'm trusting him that he is going to be faithful like he was before, like he's been through all of the ages, but also through all of the years of my life. There will be a day when I will look back on this video and where I will just think about how happy I am that I made this decision. I threw my heart up on the line I said no more wasting my time Whoa, oh, oh, oh. I said I love you You know that's true I trust you cause you know me best You are my peace, you are my rest Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Be myself now I can't imagine anything No anything 
No. 